Hi, welcome back to Burning River Bushcraft. Behind me here, I have a emergency space blanket set up in a lean-to configuration. And out in front of me is the basis for a long fire. Now, this is a standard survival shelter. The space blanket's easy to set up, quick to set up in a lean-to. Uh, with a long fire, you're good to probably 20 degrees in this weather, no problem. Uh, depending on your clothing, you know, you can get down a lot lower than that, but this shelter is a potential lifesaver. It's, uh, it keeps you out of the sun, keeps you out of the rain, and with a good fire like that, it'll get you down into cold weather. So a cold weather variant to this type of shelter is called a super shelter. Now that was first invented by Morse Kahansky, and what that is, is a lean-to tarp with the mylar backing with a sheet of clear plastic coming down in front of it, in front of the long fire. Now, what that does is that gives you basically a greenhouse. So the light and UV rays from the fire are gonna be able to penetrate that clear plastic sheeting, hit the mylar blanket, and then bounce around in there and be unable to escape. The super shelter works great. So this is a super shelter. This is the exact same style emergency space blanket with the clear sheeting in front of it. So today I'm out here to test the super shelter to see how much temperature rays I can get inside the shelter and to see if the Mylar space blanket is mandatory component to it. Okay, so you can see behind me what I've got going on. I've got the foundation for a 60 foot long fire as well as seven variables that I'm going to be testing today. The first variable is going to be no shelter at all. I've got a stake that's the exact same distance as the, the tarp setups away from the fire. I'm going to be repeatedly testing that bare stake in an open field throughout the process. The second variable is going to be the standard uh, emergency space blanket set up with the reflective side in towards the fire. No uh, plastic sheeting in front of it. The third variable is going to be that exact same emergency space blanket with the reflective side away from the fire. So it's going to be plastic side in. Uh, what this is going to do is duplicate just a plain uh, plastic tarp like you would get in any big, big box store. Uh, no reflective material to bounce that heat around. So my fourth variant is going to be what everyone would consider a super shelter. This is an emergency space blanket, a reflective side end with plastic sheeting in the front and on the sides. So my fifth variant is going to be a 5 by 7 tarp set up in a lean-to with the plastic sheeting around it, but the material is going to be made from firefighter turnout gear. Now this particular tarp is discontinued, but this is going to represent uh, a high-end tarp like you would possibly get just for an emergency shelter. My sixth variant is going to be a 5x7 Silni tarp. Uh, this one is from Walmart. Uh, super cheap, I think it's less than $10, with a super shelter front to it. So lean-to, plastic on the sides. Uh, what we're losing is the mylar reflectiveness that we have with the emergency space blanket. So my last variable is going to be just plastic sheeting, no tarp basis. So I have uh, plastic sheeting draped over my ridge line going down the front and I kicked the back of it out into a 45 degree angle and staked it out. So I'm kind of interested to see how that would do if all you had was plastic sheeting. So here's a pretty good shot of what the back side of this setup's looking like. Uh, right behind me, you see the shiny mylar finish pointed up. Uh, that's commonly used in a summer situation when you're trying to lower the heat. Uh, next to that, that's going to be the most traditional uh, thought of super shelter. Uh, the brown tarp is going to be the, uh, the Nomex firefighter turnout gear. And in the far end, you can see the blue Walmart tarp. And then the clear one is at the very end of the run. So this is going to be my baseline reading. This is uh, just a stake that we're going to be using so I have the same point each time. Uh, it's away from the fire the exact same distance as the tarp. Now I'm going to be using a dark bandana staked off the ground in every single setup. So I've got seven of these out here. Now I'm going to be using a laser heat gun to check the temperatures. That way I'm always shooting at the same type of fabric uh, that eliminates the variables of the reflectivity of the back of the tarp, changing the temperature. Now, this has been set up since early this morning. I've been screwing around trying to get this video uh, ready. So 
so I don't know if you can read that. Uh, right now we're going to be starting the test with 33.8 degrees. Uh, ambient temperature right now according to my phone is like 21 degrees. Um, that's probably going to account for some solar gain from that dark fabric. But again, each tarp has a similar color bandana in it. So that is not a variable. But uh, 33.8 is going to be our start. Okay, I'm looking at 29.4. Uh, that was a bandana I just shot that's been in the shade of the tarp shelter itself. So you're looking at, uh, you know, you're starting off four degrees warmer just standing in the sun. So this is going to be a good test. I look forward to it. Let's get it started. Okay, this is great. I'm, I'm learning stuff already, uh, and hopefully I can share that with you. Uh, before we even get started here, you know, I've already learned that the super shelter with the reflective blanket is working, you know, a lot better than any other options. This is with no fire yet. Uh, ambient temperature right this second, right where I'm at, is 21 degrees. Uh, the, the dark bandana that's in the sun is 33 degrees. All of the, the uh, bandanas that are in the tarps are all around 30.8 degrees except for the one that's in the reflective backed super shelter and that's 38 degrees. So I've gained 8 degrees just by putting that plastic up with no fire and I'm not even in direct sunlight right now. Uh, this is going to be really cool. We'll, uh, we'll get the fire lit and we'll see what we can learn. Alright, quick update here. I am uh, in the process of maintaining this 60 foot long fire. Uh, probably the last thing you would ever want to do in a survival situation or just on your day off is go outside and build a 60 foot long fire. It's a major pain in the ass. Unless you're uh, planning on burning Vikings, there's really no reason to have a fire this long. Uh, what I've got is a whole lot of fires, uh, trying to blend them together, trying to pay attention to all of them, um, and then just jockeying them through and trying to blend my coals. So that's where I'm at right now. As Soon as this thing gets going a little bit better, I'm gonna start monitoring the temperature. So when I built the log fire, I used a lot of down trees that I had, you know, drug in place with a tractor, uh, chainsawed up a few of the bigger limbs, uh, and then I used about a half a quart of split wood just to even things out. Uh, I finally have an established burn across the full 60 feet. You know, it took quite a while, and, you know, it's not a shin burner by any means. You know, the frozen wood, most of it was covered in snow, so I've got a long smoke more than I've got a long fire right now. Uh, I believe that's going to affect, you know, my readings. But, you know, this is realistic. This is what you're going to have. If you were in a situation like this, all your wood's going to be frozen. All your wood's going to be covered with snow. And this is what you're going to have. So I'm gonna, I just added a little more wood. Uh, that's all I'm going to add to this fire. Uh, I'm going to let it cook a little bit. And then we're going to take some readings. So I tried to do this as scientifically as possible. You know, I tried to control all the variables that I could. You know, the distance from the fire, the fire lays were stacked around the same height. Uh, I tried to vary the types of materials, uh, both with a super shelter configuration and open configuration, just so I can have a broader range of numbers to, uh, to look at. But what I'm finding out is there are so many variables here you know, this is just a one-time deal. I don't know that this information is going to be of any value other than in my own head that I've done it and done it as properly as possible. But I finally got a fire burning for the full length of the uh, long fire, but obviously it's hit or miss in areas. You know, it is not consistent. Uh, that's one variable that I just can't control. You know, I've got hot spots. I try to shuffle them around and uh, I just shift the hot spots. The cold spots are something you just got to deal with with this. But I went through and I took all my readings. Uh, it's been about four hours, uh, but as far as a good burn goes, you know, it's probably been maybe an hour, maybe 45 minutes of a good burn. Uh, my initial results, okay, ambient temperature started out at 21 degrees. Right now, ambient temperature on my phone is 25. So we did have a little bit of uh, solar gain when the sun was up. Uh, my open air uh, bandana on the stake with no tarp behind it, just sitting in front of the fire, is 50 degrees. All right, so originally it started at 35, so I've raised that like 15 degrees just standing in front of a fire. So the space blanket, no plastic front, reflective side down. Uh, 
I went from 30 degrees to 46 degrees. So I'm getting about that 15 degrees also. Not a big difference with the reflective tarp behind it. Uh, the non-reflective side of the space blanket down, uh, I lost two degrees on that. That was 44 degrees. Uh, the space blanket super shelter, that is the gold standard of super shelters. Uh, I went from 38.2 degrees to 67 degrees. Uh, that's right in the middle of the fire lay. You know, a lot of variables here, but that's most of my heat was concentrated on the super shelter. Uh, right beside it, the uh, the Nomex uh, tarp with the plastic front. I went from 30 degrees to 48 degrees. Uh, the Silni tarp, which is next in line, uh, went from 30 all the way up to 72. Now again, I'm using this laser, and I am shooting, you know, the same type of fabric, the same height, off, same height off the ground, the same distance in from the tarp. But again, we've got the variables of the fire. You know, I could tell as I was standing there that the fire was hotter at that point in time in front of the blue tarp. Uh, the super shelter that was plastic only. So there was no tarp to base it off of. It was plastic front, clear plastic back. Uh, that gave me a 15 degree raise. So that went from 30.8 uh, up to 45. Now that's on the very end of the line. To be honest, that got the least of my attention as far as the fire goes, and that was the last one that I was able to uh, get to ignite and burn with any regularity. So I just reshot all my numbers here. I uh, did the math from open air. So with that particular fire, uh, one step away from the outside of the fire, that's the same distance as the tarps, you know, I raised the temperature 17 degrees. Uh, space blanket, reflective side in, I raised it 16 degrees. Uh, space blanket, reflective side away from the fire, I raised it 14 degrees. Super shelter with uh, the emergency space blanket with clear plastic sheeting on the front, 29 degrees increase in temperature. Uh, the Nomex super shelter, so non-reflective uh, tarp, clear plastic front. I raised it 18 degrees, but I went through and reshot. Uh, I had a little bit of uh, kick up from the bottom of the sheeting, rolled up and was actually touching the, the bandana. So I pulled it away, and when I went through the second time, I shot the back of the tarp because I could feel the heat in there and the number kind of was deceiving and I got 67 degrees. So originally shooting the bandana I was at 48 and that puts me up to 67. So depending on, I'm not trying to cook the numbers here, that's just the way it happened to work out. So if you want to go by that 67 degrees that I just shot off there, um, that's going to be like a 37 degree increase. Uh, the Super Shelter Silni Tarp uh, that gave me a 42 degrees increase. Non-reflective, silni tarp at an angle, clear plastic sheeting in the front. Um, the clear plastic one only, you know, that gave me a 15 degrees increase, uh, but that is the worst configuration. You know, without the rigid tarp there, uh, there's a lot more blowing around of the tarp, so I know I'm losing heat with that. So where does all this information lead me then? I spent the whole day outside screwing around with a long fire, and all these tarp configurations. I am not finding any difference between standing in front of a fire and standing in front of a fire with a reflective tarp or a regular tarp behind me. Uh, that's contrary to what I've actually experienced, but the numbers don't lie with this. Again, this is my experiment at this day with this fire. And I've got a smoky one. You know, this is not a shin burner at all. So as far as super shelters go, you know, that was my main concern with this whole project. Can I add clear plastic sheeting to any tarp to get the super shelter effect, or do I need the Mylar reflective backing? And, you know, right now the numbers aren't looking like it does. Uh, my original reflective blanket super shelter, you know, I had a 29 degree increase. Uh, the Nomex one right beside it was 18. When I went back and reshot it to the back of the shelter, uh, that was a 37 degree increase. Uh, and then the Silni tarp, you know, the blue Walmart $10 tarp, 
with clear plastic sheeting in front of it gave me 42 degrees increase in temperature. Now, you know, I'm looking at 21 feet of fire here, so there's all kinds of variances. So I'm not at all going to say that, you know, one would work better than the other because of the, you know, the, all the variances of the fire temperature, but they all work. You know, they're all increasing it, you know, significantly. And, you know, that's enough to save your life in a winter situation like this. Now, as far as the clear plastic sheeting with no tarp on the end, that's kind of inconclusive. You know, I increased at 15 degrees, which is the same as standing next to the fire. I lost a lot of heat in that configuration because I didn't have any grommets to tie out on. Uh, I would lose a lot of rigidity without having that tarp there, so the plastic would flood around a lot. And that is probably the coldest spot of my fire. So is this really scientific? Not really. You know, this is just my snapshot. Uh, I did the best I could with it. But what it does prove is that the super shelter concept does work with variable tarps. So no matter what your tarp is, even if you don't carry a reflective emergency space blanket, a simple sheet of plastic can increase your uh, lean-to temperature big time in a cold situation. This has been Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bushcraft. See you next time.